Zheng Yi Quan, the fist of formation and will, is one of the internal styles of Chinese martial arts classified by martial arts master and philosopher Sun Lu Tang as part of the Wudong martial arts style alongside Tai Chi Chuan and Ba Gua Zhang. Utilizing explosive power from a short range and movements influenced heavily by the use of stays and spears, this deadly martial art emphasizes coordinated movement and short bursts of power to overwhelm the opponent and always utilizes bare hands as the standard of combat. The very early beginnings of Xin Yi Quan is said to have been founded by Cao Ji Wu and succeeded by his students the Dai Brothers in Mao Shui Together, they expanded Xin Yi Quan into two branches that survive to this very day, Liu Yi Xin Yi Quan from the Dai family and Xin Yi Yu Yi Quan from the Ma family, which relates to the subject of today's episode. While the martial art was being taught in some parts of the West around the 1960s to the 1970s, Xin Yi Quan wouldn't really take off internationally amongst the martial arts communities until the turn of the 21st century, and even then, it still wasn't known among the general public. Nevertheless, Team Ninja chose to utilize the Ma family branch of this underrated form of Chinese martial arts and apply it to a character from the Dead or Alive series, Gen Fu. And while he wouldn't be the first of his kind in 3D fighting games, his ethics, both as a grandfather and a teacher, are something to admire. As a first in this series due to Gen Fu's backstory being short, and I mean very short, this episode will be taking a different format. Instead of tackling Gen Fu's story chapters one game at a time, I'll be dividing this episode into two streamlined story arcs, the Malin arc and the Elliot arc. As usual, this will be based on DOA Dimension's retcon storyline, and seeing that this episode is the season finale, you won't be waiting long for story differences for the eight characters we cover. Without further ado, this is the eighth episode of Dare Live Lore Explained, featuring the immovable fist of legend, Gen Fu. A renowned master of Xin Yi Li Wei Quan, Gen Fu spends most of his days living a humble life as a bookstore owner, ever looking after his granddaughter, Mei Lin. One day, she would succumb to an unknown illness, and in his desperation, seeks out a means to fund the cure the only way he knows how to fight in the Dead or Alive tournament where a sizable amount of prize money is on the line. Being one of the easier characters to design, Gen Fu is as straightforward as old martial arts masters get. Being surprisingly normal in height and always having a serious look on his face, his iconic costume is a baggy martial arts top with long striped fur sleeves and slacks. Some other fan favorite costumes include a formal gentleman's suit as well as a Hawaiian beach outfit, both of which he resembles the late Noriyuki Morita's character Miyagi in The Karate Kid and Master Roshi from the Dragon Ball series, respectively. Personality-wise, Gen Fu is very much like Hayabusa. When he wants to be tranquil, he will be tranquil. When he's serious, he's very serious. And when he's wise, he's very wise. And when the life of an innocent is on the line, especially family, he will turn the world upside down just to make sure he succeeds in saving that person, even if he can only do that to his opponents realistically. Gen Fu's style of combat prefers him to be up close and personal with his opponents, possessing body blows and linear short-range punches with strong stun properties, a lunging throw with the option to open opponents up for a free air juggle or save them from a fall like a damsel in distress, only to get a free hit, and even a hold that universally parries all high and mid punches and kicks, reeling the opponent for another free hit. Oh, and he has this. With all these deadly moves in his arsenal, an overall humble personality, most of the time, and a strong will to fight for a noble cause to save others, Gen Fu may have not been a mainstay in the series in recent memory, let alone strongly involved in the game's story over time, but is nonetheless among the original eight to pave the way for a new generation. In the first Dare Life tournament, Gen Fu, like every other competitor, was invited to the Freedom Survivor to attend the opening ceremony hosted by Fame Douglas. During the ceremony, Gen Fu would boast in confidence that he would win the prize money to save his ill granddaughter. Overhearing his words, Zack would argue that he would take the prize money to Las Vegas. A short argument would ensue, and Zack would attempt to compromise by saying he would double the winnings at the casino tables to help him out, but Gen Fu rebukes the offer, preferring to win the money fair and square. Later, Gen Fu would be among three people to be eliminated early on in the tournament, and his first attempt at claiming the prize money ended in failure. However, his luck would change in a second Dead Alive tournament, as he would fare much better this time around, even against the likes of the younger, brutally strong mercenary Leo. Gen Fu would eventually be matched with the daughter of Fame Douglas herself, which raises questions for him. Although having far more experience, Gen Fu lost to Helen and was eliminated from the tournament, 
that still placed high enough to claim a decent portion of the prize money to save Mei Lin. But, in order to complete the surgery required for her to make a full recovery, he would have to attend the third deadline tournament as soon as possible. Believing Mei Lin was in capable hands for the recovery, Gen Fu also decided it was the right time to continue training a student, whom he found in a young orphan boy named Elliot. As the third deadline tournament was going on, Gen Fu would encounter Brad Wong, who was excited to fight him after hearing rumors about his iron fist. Gen Fu reaffirms the rumors assuring him that they are not exaggerated in the two fight. Sometime later, Gen Fu and Elliot would cross paths with the ninjas Hayate and Ayane. Seeing this as an opportunity for a student to learn how to fight against different styles, Genfu encourages Elliot to test himself against the ninjas. Despite this, Elliot feels unworthy due to his lack of experience, to which Hayate replies, And you'll stay inexperienced with that attitude. Genfu and Hayate would agree to do a tag match instead. Despite the result of the match, Genfu still considered Elliot worthy of becoming his successor, but Elliot's reaction may have been too humble for his own good. You're still quite powerful, sir. Oh no, I'm nothing special. Actually, I'm the best. Even so, Elliot, it is time for you to take my position. Oh? Oh no, I'm still far too inexperienced. Oh my god, will you knock that off already? You're like a broken record. I'm inexperienced, I'm inexperienced. I'll bet you still sleep with a nightlight. Hey, you're acting rather immature yourself, Ayane. What pansies like you need is a good beating. <laughs> I'd say you could learn a thing or two from this one, Elliot. <laughs> yes, Master. It's been quite an educational experience. Thank you very much, Ayane. What? I had you pegged as a career coward, you little runt. Don't worry about me, Ayane. I'll, I'll be just fine. I hope we can have another match sometime. What? Whatever, okay? Let's just get going, Master Hayate. Hey, wait! <laughs> May we meet again. My god, I love this scene. I really, really do. As cute and insignificant as this scene looks at first, this may be one of the best things, if not the best thing, to come out of the retcon Daryl I Dimension story by far. And come Season 2, I'm going to explain exactly why. Moving onward, Genfu was eliminated from the tournament, but placed high enough to get just enough funds for Mei surgery, resulting in a full recovery, putting an end to the Mei story arc. With Genfu's granddaughter Mei Lin fully recovered, Genfu no longer had a need to compete in tournaments anymore, and fully dedicated his time to training Elliot and pushing him to join the 4th Dead or Alive tournament. Believing he had the experience necessary after competing, Elliot formally challenged Genfu to a fight, and at long last defeated him. Osu. Two years later, Genfu would cross paths with Elliot again after he competed in the 5th Dead or Alive tournament and decided that he would teach him his branching variation of Xin Yi Quan, Xin Yi Liyue Quan, and incorporate it into Elliot's fighting style. Unfortunately, this will be the last we would ever see of Genfu both in story and even as a playable character, as he is notably absent from Dead or Alive 6 altogether and in the story of Dead or Alive, so far, from Genfu's perspective. I'm not gonna lie to you, Genfu's backstory leaves a lot to be desired. As much as I like his personality and the fact that he's got a successor under his wing, I really feel they dropped the ball on him narratively. He could have been so much more than how he turned out. He could have had connections to Lei Fang's parents. He could have been an early inspiration for Fang Douglas to create the Dare Life Tournament given his reputation. And what about Mei Lin's parents? Why did they leave him in his care? Could it have something to do with Doatek at the time? So many opportunities wasted to flesh out Genfu's history before Dead or Alive, and now it seems Team Ninja is moving to phase him out of the games completely, when in reality they don't have to. If Mei Ling's parents were involved with Doatek in secret, or in this case, missed, this would be a cause for incentive to get Genfu involved with the main story in some way. Alternatively, he could also serve as a purpose as someone who knew Jan Lee's parents long ago, should the writers have Jan Lee go the missed route after hearing lies about how his parents died, as I explained in episodes 4 and 5 of this series. Honestly, any story expansion for Genfu is a big plus for him. Just because he's old doesn't mean you throw him away. I mean, you're not throwing away a 1,018-year-old Tengu, right? 
Keep that energy, Team Ninja! Whether they decide to bring Genfu back or not, he's got a friendly reminder that all fighters should know. In the next season of Dead or Alive Lord Explained, we'll explore two characters from later revisions of the first Dead or Alive that will become fully fleshed out in the sequel, as well as characters making their debut directly from arguably the most popular of them all, Dead or Alive 2. I'm Osmond, and please look forward to an all-new season of Dead or Alive Lord Explained, featuring the new characters of Dead or Alive 2. Happy listening.